Minister. Over to Dr. Arun, please. So we already know about this, the rampant urbanization and westernization has led to change in the lifestyle that we are in and that has led to a lot many risks compared to the benefits we have. The risks are the health hazards which we talk about and these are uh, the leading cause of obesity and diet related chronic disease including diabetes. Now it's a global emergency we already know and the figures are just they to tell you how much the burden is, whereas it continues to grow like this, it is expected to be around 783 million adults will be, will be suffering this time by the 2045, according to the idea. India also ranks as number two and it is expected to surpass China. The reason grows at that rate, and because of the rampant urbanization and the changing lifestyle, we already know what the risk is there for diabetes. We also know that every one person drop in the A1C can reduce the loss of diabetes complications and despite of that, we are unable to reach the target. Now, the approach of management type 2 diabetes has changed from what we used to practice in the 2000s <coughs> in the current area, arena. Now, in 2000, it was mainly targeting the A1C. The glucose lowering agent was mainly targeting the A1C. Later on, we were looking at improving the overall A1C and looking at the cardiovascular profile, the weight gain, the hypoglycemic event and then <coughs> in 2015 they actually looked furthermore and they wanted to address to the CV and the renal outcome and they now talk about the patient centric approach, disease and the diabetes modifying agent to talk about remission of diabetes and we already know about the advantages of reduction of good glycemic control which can save a lot of lives including micro and macro, macro vascular complication, the cardiovascular death and also amputation. Now diabetes management is all well known to us but the algorithmic way and the most strategic way is the key and a complete medical evaluation should be performed at the initial diabetes visit to confirm the diagnosis, classify it and evaluate the complications and the comorbidities which might be existing at that particular point of time, reviewing the previous treatments and risk factors and make the treatment plan accordingly. Now this is a very important slide which helps in decision making for patients in a glycemic approach for type 2 diabetes. It's a comprehensive medical evaluation assessment of the comorbidities and while doing it, we'll be able to make a very robust plan for the patient's health by assessing the key personal characteristics, also con considering the specific factors that can impact the choice of treatment. Size the shared decision which should be done ideally the majority of the patients, agreeing on the treatment plan based on the patient's needs and the availability, of course the implementation of the plan and then providing ongoing support because it needs to be constantly driven by also the clinic target and of course reviewing and agreeing on this management plan later on. So this is a cyclical way and it needs to be adapted in this fashion although we already know about it uh, but needs to be statically, statically implemented in this way. The, the glycemic targets have got its own limitations we already know and there are certain modifiable factors like patient's preferences, resources and support whereas there are certain non-modifiable targets which because of disease duration, life expectancy and other comorbidities we are not able to address too. So we, we already know about these targets and also about this pharmacological approach in the life management. It's a very simplified way about, because it's more patient centric and now based on the patient's need and the, <coughs> the category to which the patient belongs, we can appropriately choose the right kind of therapy which suits the patient the best. In that way, we are going to benefit the patient in the most best, better way and the patient is going to adhere to this kind of therapy on long term basis alongside with preventing complications as well. So managing diabetes is always confusing and 
there are a lot of aspects regarding the safety, convenience and the education which is being linked to this but there are various barriers to it. We already know about the barriers. Again, we will say again just to highlight the barriers of education is one of the most important ones which have been highlighted which is the lack of awareness of diabetes and its complications. There is inaccurate information the primary care physicians are not aware about and they are not able to uh, give the right kind of therapy to the patient. Instead, they will be tapped into the alternate kind of medical therapy for the diabetes. Uh, again, time constraint to referrals to the diabetologist, the endocrinologist, lack of qualified personal feeding diabetes and of course, less chance of getting funds or support from the various states. So, there is a suboptimal knowledge which is there at the general physician level, the primary care physician level, which is making it more difficult. And many are unaware about the updated insulin protocols and continue to rely on the oral conventional drugs, which once fail, they don't have an option. Again, <clears throat> there is also a misapplication of the Western guidelines. The Indian physician often refer to the Western guidelines and they may not be able to. Uh, Whereas these are not really applicable for the Indian patients due to certain cultural, dietary, and socioeconomic differences, and there is the gap in effective diabetes management. There is also a resistance to change in certain instances. Even when new evidence is available, some providers may resist adopting it due to the comfort with established methods and new data coming in every night, time and now. And delayed diagnosis again a big challenge because often patient is not coming to you directly, they come to you late in the clinic and of course then they don't treat the treatment as well on time. Limited screening tools have also made it more complex despite of knowing of diabetes you are unable to screen high risk population uh, for development of diabetes and only 7% of the diabetes patients they want to see while other essential tests are still not performed adequately. Diagnosing diabetes has a lot of pitfalls because it has it's basically an asymptomatic disease which we talk about type 2 diabetes, problems of underdiagnosis, selecting appropriate diagnostic tests and palsies of tests because of which the patient suffers uh, again and again. The physician part is again a, a big challenging part because they tend to delay insulin initiation in spite of knowing the patient needs it and sometimes they wait for the A1C levels to exceed 4 and 9, only when they try and recommend. There is also a clinical inertia in terms of the, the clinician. Why? Because they think they, they are not going to adhere to this kind of therapy and it is more time consuming and, they, and it can land in the hypoglycemia to the patient. There is also the clinical inertia which tells us about the recognition of the problem but failure to act and the physician recognized need of insulin but hesitate to prescribe because of the concerns about the patient's existence and the lifestyle impact. So, initiating is most important, more visits, more time consuming, it's more energy draining but once we need to tell the patient that it does not require hospitalization, it is more feasible for them to take and uh, telling them and making them aware about the recent kind of devices and the therapy which suits them the best helps in controlling even earlier stage and of course we one day insulin which are available with us we can help the patient to choose the better way and of, of course up escalate as the disease dynamic changes again uh, let us speak the same language of uh, what our patient understand because not often what we know can be translated to the patient for betterment we need to Tell the patient in their own language and help them initiating insulin and managing their diabetes in a better way. There is also limited use of the digital tools which makes a big challenge in incorporating the recent technology including the health app, the health report where for the benefit. Data overload from their Regularly, practice. Contrary to complications, another big challenge 
but it needs to be done periodically which will come into you for both macro and Days ago, one time that they come to you on periodic basis, but you also decide to manage those sometimes. The patient is limited. The patient limited to the very big challenge. And so, so that we still manage it. Very critical and crucial for the patient. So, any patient study can talk into the group. I think we should be able to write to this. A limited patient engagement has to be possible. I must simplify it. To them, inadequate lifestyle counseling and the goal is Apart from that, it's not sufficient to do do a down. Correct. So all three actions are very, very important. What we have to do is to be more proactive in the process of implementing current guidelines and taking strategies. Also, I have this one. And of course, continuous learning is another important way by which they can enhance the skills and get the benefit uh, to the patients in the most practical way. So these are the uh, the challenges which we have talked about, and they are already suggesting this cited over here. In the multiple modes, be understood by the patients. Again, engaging them in a more popular way, sensitizing the mass media, uniformity of the consumer. Diabetes indicators play a very critical role. The family role is also very important because it comes very handy once we are uh, engaging the patient in decision making. And of course, the government role is also a critical one. But uh, as clinicians, we will be playing a very critical role. And the art of diabetes management is then simplified. So with this, uh, I would like to thank you. And uh, I would love to answer any questions. Audience having any questions.